So I wanted to go over all the functions of the Klein CL700 and its features. A few notable ones to start out with. It has a non-contact voltage setting. Uh, so it's going to give you a visual indicator, a little red light. And when you come towards a live circuit, it's going to go ahead and line up for you. thought that was a great feature. It has this selection switch here. So anything on your dial indicator that's in orange, you'll use the selector switch to go ahead and switch that over. You have a range switch for different resolutions. Sometimes it will auto range. Sometimes you need to manually select the range. Then it has your min max values as well as if you press this, press and hold this button here on the side, it's got a nice strong backlight, which I really like. The one feature that it is lacking is a amps DC setting for the amp clamp. I think this would be a great, a perfect meter for an apprentice, electrician or HVAC. It should get you well in through your apprenticeship into your journeymanship and by then you would have you know a selection of meters and I would think that this one should be in your arsenal so we're just going to go ahead go through the wheel it does come with a decent set of double insulated 10 amp rated leads as well as 10 amp rated alligator clips and a k-type thermal couple probe here as well as a little carrying case let's just go ahead and start with the bolts ac and dc setting there's only two probe ports and it lets you know all the different settings from your selector wheel that this port supports amperage is not included let's go ahead and make an ac measurement okay 123 ac all right there we go now we can see with that range we're putting it to different resolutions on the millivolt. So it has like an auto range and a manual selection range. Next, we'll go to amps AC. You'll note that you can't, none of your amp AC measurements are to be done in series. The clamp is the only way to measure amperage and it's also only rated for AC. Something I like to do, especially with an amp clamp rated for this much voltage is I like to measure a small load and see if it's capable of actually doing so. So I have a 200 milliamp load and that's reflected here on the meter. Let's see if we go through our range, if it will change the resolution. Okay, only two options there, but it will pick up as little as 200 milliamps. There's no zero function for the amp clamp. It's self zeros. I think the amp clamp function of this meter is pretty bulletproof. It's nice to see that it works so well. Next, we can go through to our continuity. So it'll be continuity, diode, and resistive measurements. Go ahead and throw on these clamps that it came with. For our continuity, you know, it's just indicating there's some kind of flow. If we press the selection button again, it'll go to an auto ranging resistive measurement. Should be a 10 ohm resistor, 10, 10.1. Let's try, this should be a 47K, 47K ohm we're getting there. Let's try our diode function. So this is showing our voltage drop across our diodes and it auto displays and lets you know, indicates by the decimal that this is millivolts. Sometimes on lower end meters, you know, it would just say an example would be 540, but there would be no indication that it's in millivolts. You just have to know that that would be the voltage drop across it. I like that it indicates that for you. You can check in the other direction, should show an OL, basically saying open loop or out of range. It is a nice backlight on this meter, I have to say. Okay, Hertz. This one is actually pretty interesting. I found while testing. So if we go to our Hertz function, let's get an AC source going here. Hertz can be measured with one probe. And so when I just use one probe, I'm getting 60 Hertz. If you decide to use both probes for whatever reason, out of habit or whatever else, you're gonna get some weird numbers coming across your meter. As opposed to, you know, if I take this Fluke, I put it on a Hertz setting, I do a single probe, I come back with 60 Hertz. You know, I get 60 hertz like that. I use both probes. I still come back with 60 hertz. So that's something to look out for on this meter. It doesn't have a way to compensate for that. And then this percentage selection that we have here, that's gonna be our duty cycle percentage. And I have another meter here that will output a 50 percentile 
duty cycle of a square wave. And so what's nice is this meter can actually read that. So that's the percentage value and it's annotated on the screen there for us as well. Next up we have our capacitive value. It's charging it up. It auto ranges to microfarads, which is nice. And then it's coming back with a value of about 1140. And this capacitor is rated for a thousand microfarads. This next feature I think is really cool to be included with the meter. And I think this is their way of trying to market to the HVAC community, but we have our thermal couple probe that comes with this meter. It's gonna default to Fahrenheit. You can see as I put my fingers on, I can start to heat it up. It's just gonna give you some really accurate temperature measurements. And if we hit our selection switch, it'll go ahead and convert it to Celsius for us. The next and last setting that we have on this meter is gonna be the low impedance. That's what the Z or Z is for, impedance. And what this is going to do is it's going to lower the internal impedance of the meter. And I'll show you what I mean. If I set this meter, so on my normal volts AC and DC setting on the Klein, I'm, re I'm reading the internal impedance of the meter and I'm coming back with around 11 mega ohms. If I set it to the low impedance function, we're gonna see that number changes by quite a bit. Now we're at three kilo ohms. So it lowers the internal impedance of the meter, which essentially is gonna set you up for a very, very small load test, but it's gonna be just enough to rule out ghost voltages. And what are those? But well, we're gonna do set that up here. Okay, so I'm, I'm set to the low, impedance setting on my meter and I have this red and black. I'm gonna have voltage on both of them. Okay, I'm reading, you know, 120 volts approximately on my red and I'm reading approximately 24 volts AC on my black. If I switch over to this low impedance setting, it's gonna set me up for a little, little tiny load test. And it's gonna try to draw, you know, maybe a few micro amps. I can still see that I'm showing 120 on my red, but when I switch over to my black, it's gonna show no voltage. That's because there's no usable voltage. The other side of this black wire isn't actually hooked up to anything. So that's gonna be really handy for troubleshooting AC circuits uh, over long distances. When you have those long AC runs that run in parallel, you're gonna get a lot of induction onto the surrounding wires. And so if you have a dead circuit surrounded by live circuits, it's gonna be full of that ghost voltage. That low impedance setting on this meter is really handy for sniffing that out. And then one last kind of feature of this guy, it does have a little holder here for one of your leads so that you can do two-handed operation. Um, overall, I think for the price point, this meter has a lot of amazing features. It's not super accurate, it's not super bulletproof, but I think for any apprentice out there, this would be a solid meter. Again, there is that lack of DC current reading on the amp clamp, but the amp clamp, the amp clamp, you know, it, it is accurate, it has great resolution. Uh, it's a great feature of this tool. The build quality of it feels solid. Um, I'd love to hear feedback from anybody that uh, has longer term use with this meter and can testify to the quality of the build and how it holds up in an industrial or construction environment. So there you go.